This happened when I was maybe nine or ten years old. I was invited to a friend's birthday party, and there was about ten other kids there. It was a friend named Tony, and he was not my best friend, but I knew him pretty well. I also knew just about everybody else at his birthday party. The party itself was at Tony's house, which was maybe five minutes away from mine. It was a really populated neighborhood with lots of houses. I remember that the party was both inside and outside because this was during the summer. I didn't know much about what was planned for the party, but when I got there, I was pleasantly surprised. Tony's parents had done a good job of setting everything up. I remember they had video games inside of the house and lots of snacks inside as well. Then in the backyard and front yard, they had activities like bags and mini golf and some other stuff. So after getting there, we played some games and eventually had pizza and cake. Then when it got a little bit later, everyone kind of spread out. Some people were playing video games inside and others went out to the yard. I remember that Tony was inside, but I went out into the front yard with two or three other kids. We were hanging out there and it was beginning to get dark. I don't remember exactly what we were doing, but I remember that I was looking out into the street and I noticed this clown. Well, it was a man dressed up as a clown. I'm not sure where he had come from, but he was walking down the side of the street out front. We soon noticed that he was walking in our direction. We figured that Tony's parents must have hired the clown. It was probably a funny joke because Tony's parents were funny people. So this clown guy walked right up to the front yard. He then approached me and the other kids that were there. Then he waved at us without saying anything. We didn't really know what to do. The clown guy started making hand signals and stuff, and then he walked up and grabbed one of my friend's arms. He started to walk away with him before my friend pulled himself away. The clown then turned around and took a few steps towards us. We all began to move back and away from him. That's when the clown started to run in our direction. I remember that we all just took off running and went back inside the house. We still thought it was probably a joke, but it seemed kind of strange. The clown did not follow us inside. But after getting in the house, we told Tony, who told his parents. Tony's parents said that they did not hire a clown. They were not expecting anybody in a clown costume. We got the creeps when we heard that. So some random guy, dressed as a clown, had just approached us and acted all weird. We all went outside to look, but did not see him. Tony's parents then called the police. They made everybody stay inside for the rest of the night. We all went to the windows and looked out of them. I remember like a couple minutes later, we saw the clown jogging down the street. When he passed by the house, he turned and did a little wave towards us. Then he was quickly out of sight. The police got there maybe five to ten minutes later. The clown was no longer in the area though. Not long after, everyone's parents came and picked them up, so I left. We never found out who the clown guy was or what he was doing. This is something that took place when I turned 18 years old. For a little background, I'm a female. It was the summer and I had recently graduated from high school. So at around my birthday on one Saturday, my parents had a birthday slash graduation party for me. It was at our house and quite a few people showed up. We had food catered and the party was mostly in the backyard. First, lots of family came by and then many of my friends started showing up as well. The party lasted for several hours and everything was going well, but towards the end, that sort of changed. It was probably like five something PM. Many people had left and just a few family members were still there. I was sitting in the backyard with everyone, but I got up to go get something to drink. In our backyard, it's mostly all fenced in and not that large. At the back side of it, there's a shed and my dad has an old fridge in there with some drinks in it. I walked over there, and when I got inside of the shed, all of a sudden, I heard somebody else walking in. I looked up, and this man was standing there who I did not recognize. I just remember that he had sort of longer hair and was about average height. When he approached me, he said hi in a friendly way. The man then said happy birthday to me, and I could see that he was holding a wrapped gift in his hand. I was confused, and the man then told me that he was my dad's friend. I sort of believed him, because how else would this guy be here? 
Maybe he had just gotten there and was also going to get a drink. It just seemed really strange that he would show up if he had never seen me before. We had a brief conversation, and the man was asking me how I was doing and stuff. He then handed me the gift that he had got for me. I said thanks, and then I said that I was going to go back over to my family. I thought that the man would follow me back over. At first, he left the shed behind me. The angle from the entrance of the shed is not visible from where everyone else was. So after leaving, the man went to the left instead of going to the right, and he went behind the small area between the shed and the back fence. There is about three or four feet until the fence that separates the backyard from the alleyway behind our house. I thought it was really strange that he was going back there, and I didn't know why. But I didn't question him. Instead, I just walked back over to the rest of my family and friends where I had been before. I remember that I went over to my dad and I asked him if one of his friends was going to be there who I didn't know. He said no and I then told him about the guy. My dad seemed just as confused as I was and we went back over to look for the guy, but he was completely gone and must have left. That made the whole thing seem pretty creepy. I was still holding the gift that he gave me and I decided to open it up. When I did, I saw that it was a framed photo. The picture was photoshopped of me and the man standing together. It was the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life, and in the photo the guy was wearing sunglasses, so it was harder to tell his exact identity. My parents and I were so confused by the whole thing. We tried to figure out who this guy could possibly be, but had no luck. I never ended up finding out who the man was. I'm just glad that I haven't seen him since. I'm going to tell you a story that still makes me angry to this day, even though it happened back when I was a kid. This was when I was about 12 years old or so. I went to the local school and was a shy kid, but I did have several friends. I remember there was this one kid at my school named Eric. We had some mutual friends and certainly knew who each other were, but I wouldn't say we were friends and we never really hung out. I didn't know a whole lot about Eric but we had a class together and sat sort of near each other. So I would often hear him talking to other people. And when I was talking with my friends, he would sometimes stop by and talk with our group. I remember one of my friends said that he got invited to Eric's birthday party that weekend. Then to my surprise, the next day, Eric invited me to his party. He told me his address and the time and said to bring a present for him. He wrote that information on a post-it note, I remember, and then gave it to me. I felt good for being invited to his party. As a shy kid, I did not get invited to a whole lot of birthday parties. Eric was not really known as that cool or popular, but he certainly had a lot more friends than I did, and I thought well of him. I hadn't known that he considered me to be a good enough friend to invite to his party. So when Friday came, Eric's party was that night. I had gone out with my mom the previous day and got Eric a good present. During the school day, the one of my friends who was also invited told me that he wasn't going. I guess he had to go to his sister's recital or something. Anyways, that made me more nervous to go to Eric's party because I would no longer really know anybody else there that well. So that night, my mom drove me to Eric's house. It was going to be a sleepover and she said that she would pick me up the next morning. I was dropped off right on time and then I walked up to the house. Then I knocked on the door. After a moment or two, Eric himself opened up the door. There was another kid with him who I did not recognize. He invited me inside, and I heard some other kids in another room, which sounded like it was at the other end of the house. Eric told me to follow him, and then he led me into the kitchen, which was at the back side of the house. Another kid then walked over from someplace else. Now it was Eric, me, and two other kids. Everyone else was still in some other room. There was a kitchen table with a bunch of presents on it. Eric told me to leave the present there, and I did. Then he told me to follow him. I thought he was going back to where everybody else was, but instead, he led me to the back door that was also in the kitchen. This led to the backyard. He told me to go outside, and I didn't know why, but I did. As soon as I was out the door, he slammed the door shut behind me and started laughing. His friends started laughing too. I thought that he was joking at first, I went back to the door and expected him to let me back inside, but then I heard him locking the door. He then said something like, later loser. Then he covered the window to the door and walked away laughing. At first, 
I didn't know if it was still a joke or what, but after standing outside for probably five minutes, I realized that it was no joke and he was not coming back. Then I felt really bad. I was too embarrassed to go knock on a door and try to get back inside. I didn't even want to anyways. I just wanted to go home, but I didn't have a cell phone back then. My mom wouldn't think to go back until the next morning. I was trying to figure out what to do. I ended up walking back into the street. I walked a ways down and eventually I ended up going to a random person's house. I knocked on the door and luckily they answered. Then I asked to use a phone to call my parents and I was able to. My mom then came to pick me up. When we got home, she was able to find out the number of Eric's mom and she called her. I remember that Eric's mom claimed she had no idea that I was even invited. She drove Eric to our house later the next day and made him apologize to me in person as well as give the present back. It didn't really make me feel that much better though. I had been humiliated. After that, I never talked to Eric again. I saw him around in school the next year or two, but luckily, we did not end up going to the same high school. This happened 20 years ago. My name is Liz, and when I was turning 14 years old, I had a birthday party with some friends. It was not a huge party, it was just me and my four closest friends from school. The five of us went to my house after school on Friday, and we were going to have a sleepover. We got pizza and just hung out and had a good time. We stayed up late in my room playing games and stuff. Finally, when it was pretty late, we got tired and were going to go to sleep. We were all sleeping in my bedroom because it was pretty large and nice. I was in my bed, and all my friends had sleeping bags and had plenty of space so I remember that it was probably like one o'clock in the morning. I'm not sure if any of us were asleep yet. I know that I wasn't. However, I was laying in bed with my eyes closed trying to fall asleep. The next thing I knew, I heard a knock at my bedroom window from the outside. There was no mistaking it, and there were several somewhat loud knocks at the window. I sat up in bed and looked to the window. There were shades mostly covering it, so I couldn't really see anything. I whispered to the room asking if anybody else had heard that. Several of my friends spoke up saying that they had. The knocking was not going on anymore, so I decided to get up and look out of the window. I walked over to it and then lifted up the shades. When I did, I saw this man standing there. I instantly backed away from the window and told everybody that I saw a guy. A few of them had also briefly seen him. We all then ran out of the room. We headed towards the living room and everybody else in the house was asleep by then. I remember that we looked out the living room window outside but didn't see the guy anymore. We talked amongst ourselves and then went around checking several different windows. After not seeing or hearing anything unusual or strange, we decided to go back into my bedroom. We figured whoever it was had left and would not be back and were then going to attempt to go to sleep again. But before doing so, I checked out of my bedroom window one last time. When I did, I saw the man coming out from behind a tree in the front yard. He instantly began walking in my direction. I moved away from the window and we all left the room again. This time, we called the police. We waited away from windows towards the center of the house for them to come. I also woke everybody else up. When the police got there, the man was gone and nowhere in sight. Luckily after that, he didn't return. This remains one of the scariest moments of my life. This is something that happened back in college. I'm a female, and I went to one of my best friends from college's house for her birthday. She lived in a pretty standard college house with a few roommates. I was friends with all of them, and I lived in an apartment close by. So for her birthday, she invited several friends over. We went to her house in the early evening and hung out for a while. It sort of turned into a party by nighttime with a lot of other people there. A bunch of us went out to some nearby bars in the area sometime around 9 or 10 o'clock. We walked because they weren't that far away, and the weather was pretty good. So after going to two or three places and being out for several hours, I remember that we decided to head back. Some people were staying out for longer, and others had already left. So when we walked back, 
It was just my friend and I. We were going down the sidewalk, and my friend said that she thought the guy behind us was following. I looked back and saw a man who I did not recognize. He seemed to be around our age, maybe a little older, was tall and thin. He was walking back about 40 feet from us, so he was not that close. My friend said that she saw him staring at her in the bar a few times. I really hadn't noticed, but I took her word for it. We continued to walk back and hoped that the man would turn off someplace. But the farther we walked, the man was still there. It got more concerning when we turned a few times and the man turned as well. These streets were much quieter, so it felt a lot more suspicious now. When we were approaching the street that my friend lived on, we decided to try and lose the guy. We took a right instead of going straight. Then we quickly went down an alleyway. For a moment, it seemed really sketchy, but we were able to cut between two houses and go to the next street over. This did not allow the man to see exactly where we were going. We walked down that street and then went over another block. We walked a little ways further before heading back to where we originally were. For the rest of the walk back, we did not see the guy. We were able to safely make it back to my friend's house. When we arrived, there were quite a few people at her place, and it was basically a party. Most of the people were just friends though, and there really weren't any random people there. I would say there was about 20 people, most of them in the living room and dining room area. We hung out with some people downstairs for a while. However, I remember looking over into the living room at one point and seeing the same guy who had been following us. He was just standing in the corner, kind of near the door. He was looking at his phone mostly and was not really talking to anyone. I showed my friend and we were both very creeped out. I remember that I asked several friends if they knew who he was and nobody did. We ended up telling a couple of our guy friends that were there who happened to play on the school football team. They said they would get the guy to leave and did exactly that. They basically kicked him out of the house and then he was gone. He did not come back for the rest of the night. I'm not sure exactly how he knew to go to the house because we thought we had lost him from following us. The only thing I can think of is maybe he waited behind a tree or bush or something, or maybe he had already knew where my friend lived. It's pretty creepy to think about. I'm not aware of her ever seeing the guy again though.